in Minneapolis. So also Oh my had, goodness, uh, you're in Minneapolis. Yeah, so Ooh. I also had the George Floyd incident happen. And I that was like two blocks away from me. Two block oh my God. Two blocks away. So, so how's all how where are you with all this, Bruce? How what are you feeling? What's going on? Well, uh, the, to be honest, I, I, I thought we were making a difference in theater, but clearly <laughs> <laughs> our message has not gotten out. And I don't yeah. understand many of the uh, many of the public feelings that are happening and just it seems to be total disregard for uh, overall welfare of the human race. <laughs> so yes, it's very it's very weird having mm -hmm. done all that we've done that this is where we're at. Over the years, I, I think we've done so much work in terms of promoting the human race, you know, especially with Shakespeare, especially with the classics, especially with trying to reinvent and remind all of this. We've seen this movie before. <laughs> These stories have been told before, and yet we seem to be repeating history in a bad way. You came here to do Sweat and The Crucible. I have forgot how much I enjoyed Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller you know was what? wonderful. Same way, Bruce. Wonderful playwright. What is it that you enjoy? Just the lessons again. We've we've seen these things before. So going back to the crucible, it's like, oh my God, this needs to be learned again. The, you know, presenting these people and how they felt and what they did, you know, which resonates on all levels. Very proud. I was very proud of Crucible. Yeah. Very proud of the entire production. Well, it's interesting how Giles emerged as a kind of, I mean, he was like a lodestone for that community, wasn't he, of integrity. It really. That, that, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to present that because, yes, I thought it was very a core, a core, a necessary part of the show. For the court, you will keep your seat. Thomas Putnam is reaching out for land. Remove that man, Marshall. You are hearing lies, lies. I have evidence. Why will you not hear my evidence? Get your hands off, damn you! Let me go. Giles, out of my way, Herrick. I bring evidence. You cannot go in there, Giles. It's a court. Ray, be calm a moment. You, Mr. Hale, go in there. Demand I speak. A moment, sir, a moment. Don't be hanging my wife, man. How do you dare come roaring into this court? Are you gone daft, Corey? You are not a Boston judge yet, Hawthorne. You'll not call me dad. Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir, and a more contentious... I have man. asked the question, and I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey, I have 600 acres and timber in addition. It is my wife you be condemning now. And how do you imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous riot? Now be gone. Your old age alone keeps you out of jail for this. They're telling lies about my wife, you sir. You take it upon yourself to decide what this court should believe. What it shall set aside? Your Excellency, we mean no disrespect to the court. Disrespect indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme government of this province. Do you know it? I only said she were reading books, your excellency, and they come, they take her out of my house. What books? Oh, what, what, what? It is my third wife, your excellency, and I never had no wife to be so taken with books. You understand? And, and I thought to find out the cause of it, you see. But it were no witch I blamed her for. I have broke charity with the woman. I <laughs> broke charity with her. He claims hard evidence for his wife's defense. I think that in all justice, you- Let him submit his evidence and proper affidavit. You are certainly aware of our procedures here, Mr. Hale. Clear this room. Come now, Giles. Oh, wait, wait.